In this lesson, we're going to review communication devices that you can implement in a notebook computer system. Now, these devices can be used to connect the notebook to a network and transfer information in and out of the system. Let's begin by talking about infrared. Infrared light can be used to create a wireless network that connects your notebook system with other network devices. It uses light, but the light is not visible light. Instead, it is light that resides slightly below the color red in the light spectrum. The Infrared Data Association developed the IRDA protocol to enable infrared data communications. Now, the IRDA protocol transfers data at 4 megabits per second, and it has a very short range. The devices connected using the IDRA protocol, using infrared light, have to be within about one meter of each other. That is a very, very short distance. In addition, the devices have to be within line of sight of each other. Let's take a look at an example. Let's suppose we want to connect two workstations together using infrared. To do this, we can install an infrared adapter. Some notebook systems come with infrared adapters already built in. And we can configure the IRD protocol to send information back and forth between these two systems using infrared light. IRD8 was popular for a very short time. It's been largely replaced by wireless devices. However, there are still some infrared implementations around. You might run into them from time to time. One of the key problems with infrared was this issue right here. Imagine what would happen if we were sending data back and forth between these workstations and somebody set their 32 ounce soda pop jug right between them. They were working away. They set their soda cup down right there. What happens? The signal's interrupted. The network is broken. These two systems can no longer communicate with each other. Another issue is you had to be really careful when you line these things up. You had to aim that beam of light just so, otherwise the communications wouldn't take place. There was a variation that was available for a while that used scatter mode or diffuse mode infrared light, which would actually send a signal out like this, which would kind of get you around some of the obstacles, but you still had a very short range. It kind of worked like your remote control at home. You've probably noticed with your remote control, if you don't have your TV remote control exactly aimed at your TV, it still works. And that's because it uses scatter or diffuse mode infrared. As long as the two devices were in the same room using scatter mode and there weren't major obstacles between them, it worked okay. However, IR is not widely implemented anymore. It had some serious problems such as short range, the signal disruption, and there's also a problem with security. Because we're transmitting our data on a beam of light that's being sent everywhere around the room, someone else could tap into your signal and take the data in that you're sending, and many times you don't want to do that. And the data that was sent was not encrypted, which meant if someone did capture it, it was very, very easy for them to read the network communications that were going on. In addition to infrared, you can also use Bluetooth to create a personal area network. Now, Bluetooth is similar to the wireless networking you might be familiar with. However, it's different in many ways. Bluetooth is designed to create small wireless networks called personal area networks. Now, these personal area networks are abbreviated as PANS, P-A-N, personal area network. Essentially, what Bluetooth is designed to do is to connect your notebook system with other Bluetooth-enabled devices such as PDAs, cell phones, printers, keyboards, mice, whatever else you want to implement. For example, if we have a notebook system here, if we install a Bluetooth adapter in it, and many notebooks come with Bluetooth already installed, we can send print jobs to a Bluetooth-enabled printer. We can synchronize data with our PDA. We can synchronize information with our cell phone. We can even use a Bluetooth-enabled mouse to use with our notebook system. To do this, Bluetooth uses short-range wireless communications, similar to 802.11, which you're probably already familiar with. This is our personal area network. Now, it has a very short range. It operates at a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz, and it transfers data at 1 megabit per second, and it has a very short range. That's why we call it a personal area network. It's only about 30 feet. You go beyond 30 feet and you can no longer communicate. One of the great advantages of Bluetooth over infrared is that it uses encryption. 
fact, it uses 128-bit encryption. And this is good. Because we're transmitting data back and forth between these devices using a radio frequency, someone else over here who has a Bluetooth adapter could theoretically capture the data that's being sent from your Bluetooth adapter in your notebook system. It's a radio signal. It's being broadcast. Anyone in range could pick it up. However, the contents of those communications are scrambled using encryption. And if you don't have the key that was used to scramble it, you can't unscramble it. So even though this system down here does pick up the signal and can capture the data, it's unreadable to them. It's just gibberish because they don't have the key to decrypt it. Using the appropriate adapter, you can also connect your notebook system to a standard Ethernet network. This is one of the most common ways computers connect to a network today. In fact, most notebook systems that you buy off the shelf today already have an Ethernet adapter installed. Now, Ethernet networks are used by large companies. They're used by small companies. Many home networks even use Ethernet adapters. In an Ethernet network, all hosts on the network have to be connected to a central connecting point. And this central connecting point can be either a hub or a switch. In order to connect to the network, you have to run a cable, probably a Category 5 cable, from the hub or switch to the RJ45 jack in the Ethernet adapter on your notebook system. Other hosts can connect to the same network. You could have a printer connected here. You could have a server connected here. When you need to communicate with one of these other devices, the electrical signal is sent up the wire to the hub or switch, which then sends the information to the appropriate host, and vice versa. In addition to an infrared, a Bluetooth, or Ethernet adapter, you can also install a cellular WAN adapter in your notebook system. Now, the entire cellular network that we use to make telephone calls is called the Cellular Wide Area Network, or Cellular WAN. Originally, it was used only to make analog telephone calls, but today, it can also be used to transmit digital signals. This allows you to connect your notebook or any other computer system to the network. And this is primarily used to provide notebook systems that are mobile, moving around in cars, on buses, on trains, mobile internet access. Anywhere you can get a cellular signal, you can connect your notebook system to the internet. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about the different ways you can connect your notebook system to a network. We talked about infrared, Bluetooth, we talked about Ethernet,